All right, Dr. Anthony Fauci says more than one coronavirus vaccine will likely be needed to end the pandemic because of overwhelming demand. In an unprecedented race, more than 100 potential vaccines are being tested at record speeds. Drug maker Moderna got FDA approval last week to start a second round of clinical trials, and Pfizer began human trials of its vaccine candidate in the U.S. Chief Medical Correspondent Dr. John LaPook looks at the science behind those fast-tracking efforts. This novel coronavirus comes and you say, no problem. We can make that vaccine really quickly. We got this. That's what I said. Kizmikia Corbett leads the National Institutes of Health vaccine collaboration with Moderna. At the start of the outbreak in January, she told us the SARS vaccine gave researchers a huge head start. It would take just two months to bring their COVID-19 vaccine to human trials. We actually changed the genetic code for the spike protein based on our knowledge that we gathered from designing vaccines for other coronaviruses in the past. That spike protein is the key the coronavirus uses to unlock and invade a body's cells. Moderna's vaccine uses genetic material known as messenger RNA to instruct cells to make spike proteins that trigger an immune response to fight the virus. What did they tell you were the potential risks? Well, that I might have bad symptoms of the flu, um, that, I, that the ultimate bad symptom was I could get really, really sick. As one of the first American volunteers for Moderna's trial, 61-year-old Carol Kelly received her first dose in late April. Tell me why you wanted to do this. There are so many people that are suffering, and I thought, here is an opportunity that just presented itself, and I need to do what I can. At Johnson & Johnson, researchers are using a different approach. They take a piece of coronavirus DNA and place it inside a weakened cold virus, triggering an immune response. We have used this so many times before that we know what we have to do in order to get very quickly to a vaccine. Johnson & Johnson's chief scientific officer, Dr. Paul Stoffels, says the company can have a billion doses ready by next year. What would you say to people who are thinking, you know, this is going so fast, I'm worried about the safety? It's a biological vector which has been used a lot in animals and in, in people, from small kids to elderly, from people who are healthy to people who are very sick, like in HIV. So we have been testing that in a very controlled way already. Accelerating the vaccine timeline has raised some questions about safety. Harvard immunologist Dr. Barry Bloom says compressing the process does not mean safety measures are being cut. We're turning up the flame on the whole development and rolling out Absolutely. process. And you don't think it's doing it at the risk of increased side effects or sacrificing safety? I don't think anybody is thinking about compromising in any manner, shape, or form. Um, but we will only know that after the initial safety studies when there's nothing obviously wrong. But even if we see a successful vaccine by early next year, Bloom says it will likely take several years before enough people are immunized to create widespread protection. And a realistic expectation would be it's going to make a difference in two to three years? It's going to make years. a difference in two to three years. A real difference, and not just in the U.S., but hopefully in many other countries. And Dr. John LaPook joins us now. John, good morning. Uh, in this, uh, on this question of safety, which you raised, in this accelerated development process, are there any steps that are being either skipped or compressed? Compressed is, is probably the better term, Anthony. And Kizmikia Corbett told me, how impressive is she, that that first step, which took 20 months for SARS and about two months right now for the COVID-19, what they basically did was they took the SARS vaccine, they unscrewed the part that's specific for SARS, and they screwed on the part that's specific for COVID-19, something akin to that, which is amazing to, in terms of compressing that first stage. And for stages two and three, where you're testing safety and also whether it, it elicits an immune response, they're combining them. Rather than doing phase two, stopping, analyzing the data, starting on phase three, they're putting them together, and they're only going to stop if there's some kind of a safety problem. All right, John, thank you very much. Dr. John LaPook.